I would say, a bit of a cult figure at the moment, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, yeah. And have been for you know some years. You, you, you're a, a famous name, particularly across the uh, pitch angling world. Yeah, I was. I, was, I, lo- <laughs> I can't help but laugh when you say that. No, That's very you need to say say so. Thank you. No, it's true. It's true. You know, yeah, it's uh, you know uh, holding the pitch UK record. Uh, it's quite a thing um but yeah if you don't mind i was just gonna kind of ask you a few things about it i know that uh, the guys are you know they're pitch obsessed so they'd be really interested to hear sort of a few things that a bit of insight from you interested to talk about obviously the famous pitch um or to, mm. um, right, correct me on my stats if they're wrong 2011 is that right so it's, it's record yes yeah, so nine years that sounds about right. Yeah, it was March, March, just at the end of the season. Yeah, got you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly amazed that it stood for so long. Um, as you know, recently there was a big perch caught over the weekend. and we, I don't know whether that's going to be made official or not, but uh, mm. I, we thought, you know, we've perch seems to be getting bigger and bigger all the time, particularly yeah. with the crayfish and the, the healthy waters. And I'm amazed that it stood for nine years or being even slightly brought into question. Um, yeah, so, so am I actually. Cause I remember, remember when I caught it saying it's not going to stand for long because there yeah. was all the reservoirs and Hanning Fields and, and the Lee Valley, the, you know, some pits in the Lee Valley with perch bigger than that. And, sure. and we know they can get they can get a lot bigger looking at Holland and Russia and places like that. So yeah, I'm with you. It's mad yeah. it stood so long. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think it's only a matter of time that they'll get bigger and bigger. So mm. uh, take me to the fateful day. Um, I'm going to hold up this picture just to show you straight away. So this is a picture that I've printed out of the pitch. And then the first thing I noticed is, I don't know whether it's a uh, dodgy camera work, but it's actually quite dark. Were you actually night fishing it, or is it fishing into the evening or mornings or... Yeah, it was just on. It was on the sort of cusp of darkness. That fish. No. Right. Um, um, they seem to really like prawns on there. I think you know that. This that um, thing that you know, if you're human and you eat steak every day, then you you know you're attracted to something a bit different. And that that lake was absolutely packed with uh, little gudgeon and little silverfish. It was just solid with little fish. So I think. Yeah. Those perch just sort of swam around with their mouths open, yeah. eating fish all day, and then there's something about a prawn um, that was really attractive to them. So, um, yeah, I'd got into float fishing prawns, and there there was one area of the lake that seemed to produce perch, and there's nothing to sort of s- suggest that it was different. It was just a little area of water where... Um, I'd had one of the big perch previously and someone else had said that it was it was a good spot. And I remember it was quite a significant fish for me because I was trying to win the Drennan Cup that year and I'd really put heart and soul into that. And I was on a sort of having a bit of a race with this guy, Alan Stagg. I don't know if you know Alan. Yeah. Um, and I think he'd just caught a really big chub and I... And and that had sort of tipped the balance and it looked like he was going to win. And I really needed, I really needed a big fish. And it was just, I think it was the last day I could go fishing because I'd really tested my wife's patience. And um, I remember it was going dark and I just put a little isotope on the float because the the perch did feed in the, in the dark sometimes there. And I got a call from Raquel um saying <laughs> i call we've all had saying i've had enough yeah what time uh, are you <laughs> coming home tomorrow and that's it you know you've <laughs> you've been fishing every day for the last three weeks uh and she was she was on the phone and i had and i had the bite yeah. and so yeah. i remember yeah. saying i've got a bite i'll call you back drop yeah. the phone struck and yeah it was uh um it, I was, I wasn't sure if it was a um, perch or a sort of bream or a small carp because it was very heavy fish all the way in, and then um, 
Was it a, a big take? Was it, or was it a gentle take? Or? It was a diddy little, you know, the float was sort of going like that, moving sideways, just dipping a little was bit. It, it, they, were, they were very pressured fish in there. Um, yeah. You've got to be quite sensitive touch. I, I, I read that, you know, you don't want to be fishing tight lines or anything like that for float fishing pits. You've really got to kind of give them the slack, otherwise you'll, they'll drop it straight away. Yes, I think that's why float fishing was so good. Yeah. Um, because you, yeah, you would quite often get, like I think Lee was having, if you ledged, you would get lots of takes that didn't develop into takes, and I wonder how, how many of them would perch. Oh, yeah. But, I, you know, with waters like that, it was, um, it's a very, very beautiful place to valley. You say the word commercial, it actually feels more like an ancient estate, like it was at the bottom of this yeah. valley with a river running past you and in the middle of a forest and, and it had this really sort of ethereal atmosphere. It's like at night the mists would come down. It was always two or three degrees colder than everywhere else and it was dead silent and you just hear the odd deer barking in the forest. Um, and it was a very, very old lake. I think that it was a sort of damp bit of the dammed river and I think it'd been there for forever. So it wasn't your sort of commercial. I had a wonderful atmosphere i hear it's a bit different now but um, i sometimes i think that's the beauty of fishing is not just the act of fishing itself it's the amazing places it takes you to whether it's like you know a sunrise on a beach or like yeah. a, a deserted river in the middle of the countryside it's, it's sometimes the yeah beauty of fishing. I, I, absolutely yeah i've got a little saying that um uh you know they say fishing's the reason for being there um, big fish angling is the reason for being there at really weird times and <laughs> really extreme conditions <laughs> because you don't you know if you're there at, at half three for that June sunrise um, it, you're unlikely to be you know out for a casual day pleasure fishing so right. it, uh, that's one of the you know probably the main reason I'm into big fish angling is 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 that um, it, it gets you really out there and immersed in in all kinds of extreme conditions and gets you that total exposure to nature. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. Um, Going back to the catch itself then, so the, the float uh, started to do the little sideways walk, a couple of dips and then off it went and you were like into yes. the... Yeah, I think what I was saying, um, they were very pressured fish, but with all, with all small waters and pressured fish, it's not so much about doing something amazingly clever or different as just being there when they're having it. And there's obviously, I think it was a good moon phase that night and they were just the right time of year. And so I think I was, it's the right time, right place. So, um, yeah, the fish was sort of under my rod tip and then started really fighting. And then I sort of caught sight of it and it was all dark and gloomy. So I could see it was a perch, but I didn't know how big it was. Um, I mean, we get getting it in the net, um, walking out of the bank and putting it on the mat and it, uh, that was when I, I thought well that's a ridiculous looking fish I remember it was I thought it looked like a bream yeah. so sort of deep and round um and I just thought oh, I've just got to get that on the scales immediately you know it's sort of taking photos in the dark and yeah. fish was quite washed out Better than my print has done it justice, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I put it on the scales on my own, and then it, um, it's a very surreal moment that you don't have very often in your fishing career where uh, I guess I was really wanting to catch a five pound perch. Yeah. And I remember seeing the dial just go past four, then past five, and then you're like, whoa, and then it went past six, and I just thought, I can't be right and I weighed it again and it, and it did the same thing um, yeah, so I freaked yeah. out a bit. Uh, it looked pretty perfect condition it, you know a lot of these uh, big old perch you see have been a bit battered and a bit gnarly but uh, from what I can see in the photograph it looked, it looked really great condition. Yeah I think it was yeah it was a definitely an old an old fish but um, uh, what age yeah, you I can't really around? remember to be honest it's, <laughs> it's dark and I was uh, I was in a bit of a state of panic. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Um, so, um, just for people themselves, obviously everybody's now like after that, that the, the the golden kind of part of the end of the rainbow, the the, the record UK pitch. Um, how do you then make it official? 
So obviously, you, I could go out and say, I've got this massive pitch, but you need some sort of way of officiating it. Um, do you need witnesses? you need photography evidence? Or how do you actually make it an official record? Um, so the BRFC needs, they need photos yeah. and all video, and then they need two witnesses, and then they need your scales. Yeah. So there was... Uh, I can't. I, I sort of at the back of my mind knew that procedure. Not that you ever think you have to go through it, but there was a guy carp fishing somewhere on the lake, so I got him. But you uh, had a quick panic, didn't you? When you thought, oh, "God, I've got to have someone witnessing this." Well, I tell you why. When I panicked, so I because I had it in the net, and then yeah. I had to leave him and go and find the guy. There was a a hut at Stream Valley where the sort of owner and the bailiff lived. This lovely yeah. sort of wood cabin. And he was always in there um, with his missus at night drink, drinking beers by the wood stove. It was <laughs> really idyllic. So I, I remember leaving this guy with the perch in the net and just saying, do not <laughs> let that get out. It's dark and he, he's going to tip the net up. He's going to jump out, something like that. But no, I, I, got, I got both of them to witness it. And... You and have then, to weigh it in front of them. They have to witness the weight, uh, and then you have to, you know, then those two witnesses then become on the official record for the record. If you like. Yeah, they, yeah, they need to witness. Then they have to sign yeah. this sort of sworn affidavit yeah. thing that says they witnessed it and it, you know, it was the weight it was, etc. And they have to be independent to you. They can't be your two mates that you're fishing with. Can they? Yeah, yeah, they're meant to be independent. So. Any junior perch fishermen keen out there to try and catch a big perch? Top tips, few top tips for them. Be in the right place at the right time. Use prawns. <laughs> any, any, what would be your top three guiding points for a young angler trying to catch a big perch? Yeah, I think just obviously I don't have anything um, original to say on this. So find where they are. Yeah. Ask, ask other anglers for sure. guidance um yeah. and per you know perch i've always found uh it's just about keeping it simple thanks very much for doing this today it's been really interesting for me and i think just sharing a bit of your knowledge and a bit of your insight uh, will really help a lot of the anglers out there not just juniors but you know seniors like ourselves and stuff. so it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to uh share share a few tips and uh hear about the amazing experience of uh, you catching this huge perch Thank you so much and thanks for asking me again.